So hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this video we're basically going to be covering a few more basic concepts in pandas that you would normally need as well as cover um, pivot tables and apply functions in pandas which are slightly more complicated. So hopefully by the end of these three videos I would have taught you guys enough to be comfortable in pandas and basically use it to carry out some basic data analysis or data manipulation tasks. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now if you haven't already watched the part 1 and part 2 of this, I would really recommend you do because these videos sort of bounce off each other and it makes the most sense if you watch the whole series. So first things first, we're going to import pandas. Now we have a data frame. Uh, this is basically the same as last video. So all it is, is you've got the day column, item column, and then cost. So it's like a budget tracker kind of project where you basically got the day of the week, uh, what you spent on and how much you spent on it. So that's one of the data frames that we're going to be creating. And then we've also got the categories. So for each of the um, item that you're spending on, so Netflix, for example, there is a category in this category data frame. So we're going to be creating these data frames down here. So first variable is for the main data frame and second variable is for the categories data frame. Now in the last tutorial, we covered how we basically merge these, aggregate them and group them together. So if you're interested in that, I'd recommend you watch part two of this, but um, we're not really going to be covering that in this one. So all you need to know is uh, we're going to be doing an outer merge between the main data frame and the categories data frame. Uh, and the merged output will look a bit like this. So basically, you've got the day column, item column and cost column, which basically comes from the DF main. And then you've got category column, which is coming from the DF categories column, because we basically do a merge on the items column on both data frames. Now we've done an outer merge and I've done this on purpose because uh, I want to show you guys how we basically deal with NAND values and use a few functions around that. Um, so let's really get into it. So first off, um, a good function to, to know in pandas is the is an a function. So basically what that would do is give you an indication or tell you which rows are NA. Now obviously this data frame is quite small so we can see with a blind eye which uh, rows are NA. But if you've got a massive data frame, uh, it becomes kind of hard. So let's say you wanted to look at the day column, right? And then you wanted to figure out which uh, rows have NA values in them. So what you could do is uh, do merged.query, double quotes, and then you basically put the name of the column, day, and then dot is NA as the um, second part. Now what this basically does is it will return the, uh, a sort of filtered data frame for any uh, any rows in the day um, column that have nan in them or not a number in them. So this is basically returned two days that have nan in them. You can do the same for other columns as well. So we could do this for cost and yeah, it will basically come up with anything that has any cost, same for category. It's basically done the same thing again. Now you can obviously create your own new variable called filtered and then assign that to this and then they'll become uh, a new copy of uh, the filtered data. So that's basically how you use is NA. Now let's move on to the next thing, which is unique, uh, a really simple one as well. Now let's say you have quite a big data frame and you have quite a few items in there and you basically just want to find out what the unique items are in, in this data frame. So obviously um, some of them might duplicate. This might be an actual better use case for the category column because a lot of the categories duplicate. So you want to find out what the unique ones are. So what you do in this case is, is you'd um, do merge, put in the column name. And what this will give you is a, is a basically a series. Uh, so it will give you the column by itself uh, and not the whole data frame. And then you can do just dot unique on that. And that will give you a neat sort of array, uh, which contains all of the unique uh, category labels. Obviously, it includes NAN as well, because there is a NAN in there. So I'll show you guys next how to actually deal with NAN values, because um, you, you, you usually want to deal with them before you can do operations on these kind of things. So in this case, we have NAN for days, which means we don't know what, what day this was on. Uh, or when we merged this, we didn't really have any data on the day and cost. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to do uh, merged dot fill an A and we're going to fill that with, let's say, un unknown for now. 
Now, if you run this, uh, what you will notice is that any uh, in this data frame, any any rows that previously had uh, NA have been changed to unknown. And as usual, this doesn't actually make the changes directory directly to the merged uh, variable. We need to reassign this, so we'd have to do something like that to to overwrite the variable, and that will keep the change. But obviously, it doesn't make sense to have like a string kind of variable in the in a numeric. Uh, in a numeric column so it'd make more sense to have like zero here for example uh, or like a standard like a standard value um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to fill in A's for individual columns now because the previous method fills it for the whole data frame so we'll do it's quite easy you point it to the column you want to do uh, and, uh, fill in A for so let's do date and we'll just do fill in A um, and then we'll do on um, no now if you don't want to do the whole thing where uh you have to reassign it to a variable all you need to do is type in in place equals true and that will basically mean it will make the change in place and uh, you don't have to reassign it to the variable now if you see here it's basically done what we need it to do uh, only for the date column it's replaced any nans with unknown do the same thing uh because we still have some nans to deal with in the cost column so we'll do cost sorry merge cost dot fill na and let's fill that with zero point actually let's just uh, use a standard value of 3.00 just to be safe uh, and then we'll do in place equals true let's inspect that again and boom the last two which were none before have been converted to three and category obviously it's a string category so we can just use unknown for that as well so we'll basically do merged uh, category dot fill na unknown in place equals true. Cool. So that's usually how you would sort of deal with NAND values. Um, if if it is that you, all, all of your columns are numerical, you could have just done a, a merge.fillNA instead of filling in columns individually. Uh, but since we had numeric columns to fill as well as sort of string columns, we, we did them individually. But it's good for you to know anyway. So that's basically three of the things covered. Now we can look at string operators. Uh, and basically what the uh, the string operator allows you to do is let's say for the day column you wanted all of your strings to be uppercase instead of like first letter capital right usually what you'd think is to loop through the old data frame and then make one change at a time but that can be quite tedious and long to write so you, you actually have um, the string operator that you can use on uh, pandas series or pandas columns uh, which will let you do the whole operation in sort of one go so what you want to do is um, type in the name of the data frame the name of the uh, column and then use the dot str so what that does is it it's it's an operator which gives you access to the uh the strings uh within the day column now you have to make sure that these values are actually all string otherwise you'll get an error and then you, what you can do here is then use uh, functions like upper, lower, title, etc. that you can normally use in Python variables, like string variables. If we use dot upper, that will basically make everything, you know, all caps like we want it to. If we use dot lower, uh, it will do all lowercase. If you use dot title, it will do what we currently have, which is first letter capital. But like I said, we want to do um, upper. So, yeah. Basically, what it does is it returns a new series which contains uh, all of the days replaced with uh, all capitals. Now, if we look at the merged data frame again, what we see is there's no change actually been made because obviously we haven't saved the change. So to save the change, you wouldn't do merged equals because this right here is not a data frame. It's a series. It's a single column. So you can't replace an existing entire data frame with a single column that will mess it up so you need to replace the day column with the new day column if that makes sense so this right here is basically saying i want to take the day column from the merged data frame and then replace it with the uh, str.upper version and that will basically give us an updated data frame with um, the day column updated to uppercase perfect so good pace so far we'll cover the string operator as well now let's basically look at how you would um, basically drop items uh, or drop like uh, columns from the data frame. Let's say you are no longer in need of the um, 
item cost because you've sorry the item column because you've already got a category column and you want to drop it now to do that you just simply have to do merged dot drop and then you type in the name of the column you can also provide multiple columns in here so for example it could be item and uh, category and it will drop both and you have to make sure you're doing access equals one because access equals zero will basically try and look for it uh, in the rows so it will do from top to down and we don't really want that we wanted to drop the column so access equals one will tell it that you're, you're looking at this uh, from like a oh from like a column perspective so if you do that right now what you get is a updated data frame and now it's now that it's drop item and category you're only left with day and cost so that's how you basically dropped columns from a data frame and obviously you can update uh it, this is not going to update it in itself you can uh create a new variable called um i don't know uh shorten data frame and then once you've assigned that to the dropping it's basically going to do an in place and you know keep the uh new updated data frame with just the two columns cool so that's basically the um dropping explained as well now uh there's also a good one for drop na so in the way that we figured out how to fill na values previously let's say you didn't really want to deal with the na values and you just wanted to drop any rows that have na values in them what you would do is um, you'd simply do merged dot drop na. Now we'll get the same data frame as above because we already filled the NANs. So what I'm going to do is go up here, refresh this data frame. And if we inspect it, uh, let's inspect it right around here. Now bear in mind, this is the original data frame with everything as normal. And then the NANs as well. So what this should do is for any rows that have NAN in them, it should drop them. So the last three should disappear and we should only have 0 to 4 here. Uh, and perfect. So it's basically gotten rid of the last three. We've only got um, gym, bananas, apples, milk, and Netflix. And the last three have disappeared because they got NANs in them. So that's how you do dropping NA value, rows with NA values. And obviously this doesn't do an in place either. So you'd have to save this to a new variable. Uh, you can either do merge equals merge to drop any or just create a new variable like this. And then you can print it out. So basically that's the drop any covered as well. Now uh, the last basic one before we move on to the slightly more complicated functions, the rename function, which can be quite handy as well. So let's look at the uh, merge data frame that we had. Um, and what I'm going to do here quickly is rerun the code for filling in the NA values and making the day uppercase. Uh, get rid of this one. Um, we can get rid of this one because it's already been explained as well. And then um, quickly do merged. Okay, so this is the data frame that we slightly processed. We had the uh, day in uppercase and then we filled in the NA values with unknown three and unknown so what we want to do here is um, let's say we wanted to rename one uh two of the columns let's say we wanted to rename this to something else and this to something else now to do this you can do merge.rename and then to give it a uh, parameter called columns and then this basically accepts a dictionary so in dictionaries we have keys and values uh, as per usual uh, if you don't know what, how to work on dictionaries i'll make sure to link a tutorial on dictionaries right about here so um yeah uh, i'd recommend you check that out so we basically on the left we put in the key so that's the original column that you're trying to re rename and then on the right you basically put in the new column name that you want to rename it to so let's say item renamed something sensible now uh, you can either leave it at that if you want to change just one but if you want to change another you can just put a comma and then do another key value pair in there so let's do cost and then cost renamed right we run that and boom the um, columns have updated we have successfully renamed the columns as well now this change is obviously not saved to the data frame because we haven't used the in place neither have we given it a new variable so to actually make sure it saves, you can just create a new variable called rename or use the existing one. 
uh, and then that should sh save all your changes. So it's basically a common pattern in pandas to give a new variable or update the thing by uh, pointing it to the updated data frame. Otherwise, it doesn't really save your changes. Cool. So now that we've basically gone through all of the most basic functions, let's look at pivot table and apply. So what we need to understand uh, in, let's just copy this. Uh, what we need to understand in pivot tables is uh, we can usually use them if we want the data formatted slightly differently or if we want this table to sort of be flipped, for example. So let's say uh, you wanted to sort of create like a report type data frame where you wanted the um, all of the items in the items column to be the, the columns uh, and then the rest to sort of be uh, the same. That's when you'd use like a pivot table. It's similar to how it works in Excel as well. So what you do is, uh, let's just use the renamed, uh, renamed data frame, which is above. And then you do dot pivot table. Now this accepts a few parameters. Uh, the first parameter is called index. So this is basically the column that you don't want to change at all. Uh, or you can have multiple columns as well. But let's just say we want to keep the A column here. Uh, and then the next one you would need is the uh, columns variable. So what this needs to specify is uh, either one or multiple columns. So if you're doing multiple, you'd have to give a list. If you're doing one, you'd just do it as a singular one. Or you can do a list with one item as well. It works either way. So this will basically be the co current column that you're trying to convert into columns. So I want to change all of the items. Item renamed. Uh, all of the items in this column into columns of their own, which is why I put it in columns. Then you need to tell it what values you're going to use for each of those columns. Now, there's only one value uh, column here for, for our case, which is the cost. So we're going to do cost renamed. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're not going to, we're basically going to get rid of the category column because uh, we haven't specified it in here and we don't really need it for now. Um, so let's run this and what you're going to end up with is something that looks sort of like this where you have the um the day column which is what we use as the index so we've got the different days and then as you can see all of the items that were previously in the item rename column have been changed to columns of their own and we sort of have like this matrix table now which gives us a better look at the data um I think what we can do here is instead of looking at item rename, we'll look at categories just to make it a bit easier. I think there's um, fewer categories. Oh, category. Uh, I spelled that wrong. Yeah, fewer categories, so it'll be easier to look at. Um, now, what you want to do here as well is uh, provide an aggregate function. So just how we learned about uh, the aggregation function in grouping, we can use similar things here as well. So you can use sum, mean, min, max, etc. So any duplicates that it has, it will know what to do with them. So let's use sum in this case. And if you notice, some of the values have updated now because it's basically done a sum as the aggregate because um, a lot of this will duplicate across days. <clears throat> So now that we have a nice little data frame with the um, stuff that we need, we can reset the index, um, which will basically give us something like this, uh, which is a neat data frame that we can access. Now, um, that's basically it for the pivot tables, actually. It's just a way to reformat your data and have a look at it in a different manner. Uh, what I'm going to do here is... Um, give this a variable because like always it doesn't save the bit of a pain pivoted and yeah that's basically the end of the pivot table explanation now the last thing we're going to cover is the apply function so let's quickly look at the merged data frame again so this once again is the original data frame we were operating on after a bit of manipulation so now let's say what you wanted to do was um, instead of having numbers here, you wanted to add uh, pound signs to this column, right? What would you do now? You could create a for loop, which will iterate through each of these things and individually do it, which will obviously take forever. 
or you could use the apply function which is a, a lot more performance um, performance uh, enhanced I would say so it performs a lot better in terms of how long it takes to to deal with sort of iterative tasks so the apply function is is quite simple as well so you do dot apply and then if you've heard of lambda functions uh, it's nothing too complicated so all it is is a anonymous function so it's a function that gets used once and then destroyed so you don't really define it um, now whenever you want to pass a function to a function which can be a bit confusing but stay with me here uh, what you need to do is um, type in lambda and then you can type in any parameters so usually how you'd give parameters to a function you can have parameters in here as well so we need just one parameter and that parameter is basically going to be the data that gets accessed from each of the columns because what we want to do is go one column at a time so this then 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 this you get the idea now what I'm going to do here quickly is print the X for you just to show you what that looks like. And then it's important here to understand how accesses work as well, because it's going to, we're going to need to update the access in order to get the data how we need it to. So let's do apply. Now you're going to have to stick with me here because it's going to get slightly confusing. What I've done here is we've got the merge data frame and then we've used the apply function, which expects a Lambda function to be passed to it. Then we basically said we've got, we're going to have one parameter which will be passed back to us and we're printing x now we've done axis equals zero now what that basically means is that the way it's going to iterate through the data frame is that the first iteration or the first loop it will print out all the values in the day column going from top to bottom which is what it's done from monday to unknown then um, it's going to go to the next column and then print out all of the stuff in there from top to bottom so gym to swimming you can see gym to swimming same thing with the cost and the same thing with the category so it's gone top to bottom what we want is left to right so we want uh, items going from monday gym 1899 health and lifestyle then to the next then to the next then to the next if you want to go in in that sort of fashion you have to use access equals one and then what, what will happen is we'll get data in that format so for each of the uh, rows that we have we'll get data for it so you have the day which is Monday, then the item, which is gym cost 1899, category health and lifestyle, then next, then next, then next. You get the idea. So what we want to do now is instead of just printing X, we need to, what we said was we're going to add a pound sign to cost, right? So what we're going to do here is when we're printing X, we're only going to look at the cost column because that's what we really care about. So let's just look at the cost column instead of looking at everything. Let's run that again. And this will probably be a lot more clearer now. Uh, the reason why it's printing none is because usually it expects us to return something, but we're not returning anything. So that will disappear soon. Don't worry about that one. So in this case, we can see that we've accessed only the cost column successfully. And trust me on this, it's going through one, one row at a time. So what we want to do here is basically um, add a pound sign. So this will be in a numeric format. So we'll have to convert it. So we'll do SDR X cost, which will basically convert the numeric column into a string column. And then we can add a pound sign onto it like that. Now this is still just printing. If we rerun it, we'll get all the correct values. But what we want to do instead of printing is actually just type in return over here. Uh, and then re okay, we don't need to type in return. It will just return it automatically because it assumes that. And then when you rerun it, we obviously don't get the nonce anymore because what we're returning essentially by running this is a single column which has the updated values. Now, like we did before, um, if we print out the merge data frame again, we will notice that the cost column is not updated at all. There's no pound signs. And that's the reason is because we haven't updated the column. We do it in a similar fashion that we did before. So merge cost is equal to and then basically that's going to be the updated values which we can then replace the cost column with so let's look at merged again and boom we have all of our pound signs in there and we have managed to use the apply function to basically iterate through each row and add a pound sign in a similar fashion you can do other stuff as well so whatever action you want to carry out with each of the uh, rows of data you can do that 
and then you can assign it to an existing column or even a new column if you want it to. So this could even be a cost new and that, that will basically make a new column. Cool, so that's pretty much all I had to cover during this tutorial guys. If you want any specific tutorials on pandas, please do leave that in the comment section. If you have any feedback or ideas on videos, please let me know. And I shall see your beautiful faces in the next one. Peace.